Hey Hardtail fans, for the last year and a half I've been designing a new signature hardtail. This is in collaboration with Stanton. Let's check it out and find out what this bike's all about. So this is the Sedona. It's a new model for Stanton. It's my signature trail bike. I still have the Binary Maniac. That is still a signature bike of mine. That's a titanium do-it-all 29 by 28 sliding dropout slack hardtail for riding rowdy stuff. This is not designed for riding rowdy stuff. It's not super slack. It's not meant for a long travel fork. It's meant to be great at what hardtails are best at, which is turning green and blue trails into a playground. And so I built this to have a compliant ride. I built it to be maneuverable at slow speeds. I've never owned a supercar like a Ferrari or a Lambo, but I imagine it would be rather frustrating never being able to actually get it up to speed. And as a daily driver, it'd probably be pretty terrible. I think bikes are the same way. Sometimes we buy these massive enduro rowdy sleds and we rarely take them over 20 miles an hour. Well, I think a lot of the place where people are riding hardtails, we need something more like this. It's a little tamer, a little more exciting at slow speeds. With my Patreon bike consultation service, I've worked with hundreds of people and got their input on what they're looking for on their next bike. And most of my patrons are looking more for something like this than something super rowdy and super slack to huck off stuff. But I wanted to design a bike that was my dream bike for going anywhere in the world. It can handle black diamonds, but it's really geared for the greens and blues like flow trails and great epic XC rides and bike packing and long distance. This is a 29er. It's designed around a 120 mil fork. It's got really tall stack. I like a tall front end, so it's not gonna feel racy and hunched over. This is made out of 4130 chromoly steel. You got a threaded bottom bracket. You'll notice kind of my signature, all my signature bikes have this, this completely straight seat tube that intersects the down tube ahead of the bottom bracket. There's actually a hole inside for the dropper cable to stay completely internal once it pops in here that allows you to get a longer dropper in there because if we put a little window in here and brought the, the port back in in this dropper you know there's plenty of room but if as you get lower and lower the actuator takes up space by being able to keep it fully internal we're able to get longer droppers on here we've got two water bottle mounts inside we've got a three pack underneath if i go bike packing i can put all my water down there the nice thing about these standoffs here is they do not interrupt the seat tube, so you can run the dropper all the way down and still run the water bottle here. That's essential for me, and it looks so good. The execution is absolutely stunning. Now, Stanton's also working on a sliding dropout for this and for their other bikes as well, the Sherpas and others. So this will be single speedable, and it will have adjustable chain stays if you opt for the sliding dropout option. All right, let's see how terrible this is to route the dropper and see if that's gonna be a deal breaker. That's our big question right now. That was a, a good design idea, but we'll see how it's executed and how it works here. I value dropper insertion more than almost anything on a bike because being able to slam that out of the way makes it more like a trials bike, more like a BMX bike, especially because I got short legs. All right, so we're gonna see if we can suck this through with the vacuum and get this to come back out here. Ooh, that might be hard. I don't know if it's gonna be easier to go this way or that way, but if it came pre-threaded, would that be good enough for you? Or do you want ease of removing and adding droppers and you'd rather lose a little bit of insertion, but you'd uh, be okay with a little window here? Let me know. All right, I got the string <laughs> run through. That was not easy. Once it's in here, it sucks through the vacuum pretty well, but getting a limp string through there is tough. I might be able to create a tool or something like a little dowel with a slit on it to shove it down in that hole, then I think we could I think we could figure something out so that they could come with the string on it. Oh yeah, that's not bad at all. Not shredding and that bend isn't crazy. Yeah, baby. Sweet, we're officially threaded. Okay, with the string, that's not bad. Getting the string in there, uh, that's kind of a pain. What I need to do is create a hack to get the string in there. I think a dowel with a little slit like the back of an arrow you could push it down in there and then use the vacuum and suck it up through there. Yay! Okay, that's actually not bad. Personally, I do think that's worth it to have A, it's totally clean and tidy and not gonna rattle, and B, 
you get that extra bit of drop. Now I'm going to run a cable dropper on here instead of my wireless. One other cool thing we did was we made this a 31.6 seat tube. There are very few steel frames that do that. None of Stanton's current frames do that in steel. And I get it, you don't need a big seat tube in a steel frame. You could go smaller with a 30.9, but most of us have spare 31.6 seat tubes. That's a far more common dropper than a 30.9. So I specified that this tube be bigger. That added cost, that added complexity, but that allows me to run and you to run more of the droppers you have from other bikes swapping over. And if you do have a 30.9, just run a shim and you'll be fine. In fact, Specialized was shipping their S-Works when they went to the really big, I think it's 34.9, they have a really big dropper. Uh, they didn't have droppers in that size yet, so they were shipping the frames with shims on them with a the normal 31.6. Shims are absolutely fine if you do have a smaller dropper, but this just opens up a lot more options for people that are putting old parts on there. That was one of the holdouts that I was stubborn about. This has to be a 31.6 seat tube so that we could all run our other droppers. So that's really not bad. Like feeding this through here is fine and it's not shredding the housing. So I'm a fan. We're just going to have to figure out the easiest way to suck the string through to get this all pulled through. Awesome. We got standard press and headset cups. That means you could run an angle set if you wanted to really tweak the head angle to what you wanted. And we've also got a threaded bottom bracket. That's a must for me. Man, it's, it's such a simple machine. All right, now we're going to check tire clearance. But this is a note uh, for all Stanton owners. When they come shipped to you, you want to make sure to lock tight the dropout bolts. You do not want those coming loose. They're standard chain ring bolts, which is cool. So I'm just gonna remove these and lock tight them. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if a 29 by 26 fits. I really hope it does. That's a size that I really like for bike packing and stuff. Oh my goodness. This is a 29 by 26 on a 40i rim. So it's a pretty big 29 by 26. Oh yeah, we're good, baby. Sedona clearance, and I'm gonna say, and then some. Let me show you. Yes, we weren't sure if it was gonna fit. This is so hard to film on camera, but we got seven mil clearance all around. I mean, maybe if you're running like a DHR2, something with massive knobbies, it might rub. Or I'm gonna say most people clearance. Maybe not UK mud clearance, but I'd run that all day long. Yes! Dang it, I forgot to weigh it. Dang, I'm so sorry. I'm so excited to build it up, I forgot, <laughs> forgot to weigh it. Guys, she's all built up. <laughs> what a joy this was to build. So, the only trick was getting that string through for the dropper, and that was a trick, and uh, we'll see what we can do about that. Personally, I think it's absolutely worth it. I'm running a 200 mil fall line 9.8 and it comes down to about here. I wouldn't be able to run this if we ran the external dropper here. And it, sh and it feeds through really smooth, it doesn't catch. Absolutely stunning build. This has such a vintage, retro, fun vibe to it. And I think this is quite possibly the most beautiful hardtail I've ever built. There's a lot of stuff going on here that the average Person's not going to realize all the these tiny little things that are just incredible that make this bike special just to build. It was a absolute treat to build with where all the cable guides are. Your cables are nice and tucked up into the frame. Everything routed beautifully. Bottom bracket installed great. We've got clearance for a 32 oval, which means you'll be able to fit a 34 round on here. We got clearance for 2.6. I love the way that the frame intersects with the top tube and the seat stays and does not touch the seat tube. It kind of, I'm hoping, is going to give it a little bit of that flex. This bike's not meant to, to shred hard or hit massive jumps or uh, just, just mock through the trail. It's meant to be comfortable at slower speeds. Final build weight came in at 29.5 pounds. That was a little heavier than I thought. I'm running my heavy Paul Clamper mechanical disc brakes. And the SRAM axis is a little bit heavy, but nothing else on here is heavy. 
Uh, the 9.8 fall line, 200 mils, a little heavier than like a 150. We've got super light Gulo composite 24 hole wheels with carbon fiber spokes. I'm running a 160 rotor rear, 180 front. Fox Stepcast 34 performance in the front with the Grip 1 damper. That's my favorite Fox damper. We've got 1-up carbon bars. We've got a 9.8 stem, Paul clamper, and Paul Canty levers. I'm running the Ergon GD1 grips. We're running SRAM Axis GX Eagle. We're running these beautiful 5-dev Kashima cranks. And 5-dev is an awesome supporter of this channel. This is going to live in the 5-dev booth for Sea Otter. They are awesome. Whenever you use my discount code that gets you 5% off all things 5-dev, stems, cranks, pedals, all sorts of stuff. They're coming out with more stuff I can't talk about yet. Every time you use my code, not only do you get 5% off, and it's the only discount code they use, but you also help support this channel. They kick a couple bucks my way as a thank you for promoting their products. And I'm so grateful for them for outfitting me with stems and cranks and stuff to make these builds possible. So I know you guys have been chopping at the bit for this video. We intentionally delayed it for today because we wanted to make sure we released it when pre-orders were available. So if you're interested in this, we're making a limited batch. If you want in on the first batch, you can pre-order this right now and save your spot and get yours on the first order so you don't have to wait for batch number two after batch number one sells out. So you can go over to Stanton's website right now, place your order. There's a lot of unknowns still like colors and... Um, availability and when it's going to land and all that, but if you head over to Stanton's website, you can learn more about this bike, see the geo chart, see the pricing, and put your pre-order down if you want to snag one of these and secure it before they sell out. The frame just looks a little bit wild. It's got this super short seat tube. Look at that. It'll still fit two bottles in there, and it looks long. It's actually not as long as a lot of super modern bikes, and I intentionally built this slightly smaller than the rowdy bikes that most of us ride. I know a lot of us have gotten used to longer slacker bikes and we like the way that they plow, but for how this was meant to be ridden, I wanted to shorten up a little bit. Shorten up the wheelbase, make it a little more playful, run a little bit longer stem, get some of that fun back at the five to 15 to 20 mile an hour range. So it's actually designed to fit you maybe 10 to 15 mil shorter reach than you're used to running. When Dan and I were building this, I said, Dan, I want it to feel like the Sherpa as far as ride quality, just with a little bit different dimensions. And he said, no problem. We'll use the same triple butted 4130 chromoly steel as the Sherpa. So we're using the same tubing profiles as the Sherpa on the Sedona to keep it smooth riding. One place that this is different from the Sherpa is it uses the double sided CNC yoke from the Switch series. So the Switch Niner and the Switchback little bit stiffer bottom bracket area. We did that for increased tire clearance and we did that for a stiffer power delivery. So when you sprint, it really puts down power well. Now it's time to throw this thing on the geo meter and get some geo measurements. Now this is the first batch out of the oven. I've never designed a bike where they nailed everything exactly like I wanted right off the bat. So we're gonna see how close this geo, actual geo came to desired geo. Rear center. 415. Actual chain stays 422. Super tucked in rear end. This thing's more like a 27.5 bike that happens to fit a 29er. We really like that. Reach is 440. That's spot on from what I wanted. Normally I ride a 450, but because my stem's now 10 to 15 mil longer than normal, I wanted the reach a little shorter to accommodate for that and to have the short wheelbase. Wheelbase. 1165 so it brings that front end in a little bit fun for playing on the front end fun for for goofing around it should feel like a small bike a lot of people are still scared of 29ers because a lot of 29ers feel big and you just kind of feel like you're perched on this monstrosity this thing is tiny and tucked and should give you more of a dirt jumper trials bike vibe to it Front center is 750. Seat tube length, I'm gonna measure the way we traditionally measure from the center of the BB spindle, 375 actual seat tube length. For insertion, you've got 320 mil of insertion. So that way you can find out if your dropper will fit. 
Very cool. So far, everything's come out exactly how we wanted. Let's measure the seat tube angle. So the effective seat tube angle. Effective seat tube angle, I'm gonna go to this bolt here. That looks slack, let's see. Yeah, that's 72.8. That's a lot slacker than we requested. The idea was to get this in the 76 range. That means, let's measure effective top tube then. 630. So that's a little bit longer than I wanted. That means I'm more stretched out, especially running a 50 to 60 mil stem. So on the production model, we're gonna steepen that seat tube up a little. This is slacker than I wanted. But yeah, that slacker seat tube angle with the short rear end is gonna make this thing wanna lift like crazy. Some people really hate steep seat tube angles. That's why saddles have 20 mil of adjustment on each side, so you can adjust that quite a bit. But having ridden so many super short chainstay bikes, I want that seat tube forward, especially if we are gonna goof around and do some technical bunny hops onto the picnic tables and stuff like that. So that breaks tradition from a lot of Stanton's other bikes. They have typically a little bit slacker seat tube angle. This one's gonna be a lot steeper forward to combat that desire for it to lift. But remember, you're also gaining a bit more effective top tube out of the longer stem. Uns all these are unsagged, by the way. Head tube angle came out to 65.9, right where we wanted it. So everything's dialed except for that seat tube. I just need to bring it forward like another inch probably tighten that up a little shorten the distance when seated the reach is still going to be the same when you're standing it's still going to be the same it's just going to bring the cockpit in a little bit while seated and pedaling whoo what a beauty i'm pretty impressed that they were able to nail so many of the geo numbers right out of the gate the c2 will be steeper than this on the production model which is exciting for me. That's the only thing that's a little bit off from what we talked about. Bottom bracket came in at a 60 mil bottom bracket drop. That's a very modern drop. And with the short rear end, you're still gonna be able to manual and bunny hop and play, but it's not gonna feel like you're on top of the bike. You should feel more in the bike and planted on this than the Sherpa. And we have a huge 652 mil stack. Now we really hemmed and hawed about whether we make this bigger and limit your droppers to fit more water in there or not. So right in here, I can almost fit one of these bottles. I'm gonna have to go with a little bit shorter one to fit in there, but in here you could fit a super long one and we've got this underneath. Everything has a compromise. You could run a big triangle and get bigger bottles in there, but you're gonna have to run a shorter dropper and that was not something I was willing to do. So like I said, take that lid off, pretend that's one of the shorter ones. I'll be able to fit that in there, no problem. This is kind of the traditional mountain bike water bottle size. There's a shorter one and a longer one. At least on the size, you're gonna be limited in what goes here, but not what goes here. As we go larger than that, you'll have more options. This is the smallest size. If you're a really petite rider, like under 5'2", you might find the reach is a little bit long, but I guarantee you're gonna like the standover with how much this dropper gets out of the way. <laughs> there are very few bikes I can straddle with my feet on the floor. Let's see if I can do that on this almost with sandals, with shoes on I would. But here I'm actually able to straddle, straddle the top tube. There are like three bikes in existence that I can do this on. If you can flat foot over a 29er, that's about what it feels like to flat foot right here. Tons of standover. And I still have 10 mil that I could drop this. So I actually think smaller riders are gonna be able to fit this. You may wanna run a little bit shorter stem. It's, it's got a little bit longer reach for a five foot two rider but still this is gonna fit you better than most smalls from most companies. So if you're interested in this bike, head over to Stanton's website and pre-order it now so you're in on that first batch before they sell out. I think this is gonna be a super, super popular bike and I'll bet we're gonna sell out the first batch really quick. I'm so excited that this is steel. I'm excited that it's affordable and available to the masses. And I'm excited to see lots more people get into a really great hardtail to see what really great hardtails are about because hardtails, good ones, are truly special. And I hear a lot of comments from you guys saying, I've had, you know, 30 different bikes and Hardtail X was my favorite out of all of them. There's just something about a hardtail, a great hardtail. There's a simplicity and a joy, a lack of maintenance and a, a connection and feeling with the trail that I don't get with my full suspension bikes. And I'm so excited to present to you the Stanton Sedona 
the partnership with me and Dan Stanton. I hope you guys love this bike half as much as we do. It has been an absolute pleasure to deliver it to you. Thanks for watching everybody. You're amazing. If you want to support my channel, help me make more videos in the future, become a patron today. If you need bike advice and you want to pick my brain on the perfect bike for you, I do that over on Patreon. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.